everyone, Nicole Russo and Joe Nevels coming to you from Lexington for this week's edition of the Oaks Countdown. Let's take a look at our top five contenders for the Philly Classic. No changes to this top five set of horses with the ultra consistent take charge Paula hanging in there after her second place effort in the Gulfstream Park Oaks. And Joe, we've discussed there was a lot to like about take charge Paula's effort there. Such a consistent seasoned Philly. Yeah, she's one that's run her race every single time. She shows up, she's in the money each time. And you had to love the little extra turn of foot she showed in the final turn of the Gulfstream Park Oaks, you know, giving up her position a little bit and then making her move in the final turn into the stretch, you know, ended up getting nipped by Coach Rocks at the end. But you got to love the heart and determination this filly has going forward. Definitely. And she's so well seasoned. And moving on to the rest of our top 10. And here's where you do see the two newcomers on our list. Gulfstream Oaks winner Coach Rocks, who we'll get to in a minute. And Rhea, who was maybe a sneaky good second in the UAE Derby. Of course, room on this list with the defection of Caledonia Road and illness keeping her off the work tab and out of this weekend's preps. And she just had no room for error. Now you kind of have to think there's no way the champion makes the Oaks now. Fairgrounds Oaks upset winner Chocolate Martini, kind of our bubble horse at the moment, along with Blamed, whose connections just told our Mary Rampolini a short while ago that she will be pointed to the Kentucky Oaks as a supplemental entry. They had kind of been on the fence. Of course, 14 can start in the Oaks based on the eligibility point system used by Churchill Downs. Let's talk about Rhea's performance in the UAE Derby really quickly. You're watching her finish a distant second, but to Mendelssohn, who is such a hot commodity for the Kentucky Derby at the moment, beat an American-based Colt in re-ride. Now she's going to move to the barn of trainer Bob Baffert to be based in the U.S. and target the Kentucky Oaks. This filly wants to run all day. Before the UAE Derby, she won the UAE Oaks to earn her qualifying points. Both are running about a mile and three-sixteenths. She's a half to Curlin Road, a graded winner in a mile and a half. Family of Breeders' Cup Classic winner concern. She will have this big trip from Dubai to contend with, but I'm circling her and watching her closely. The more conventional Oaks prep on Saturday belonged to Coach Rocks. This Gulfstream Oaks was her eighth career start, where she wore down Take Charge Paula. She previously won her maiden at the track by eight lengths, She's from the first crop of Preakness winner Oxbow, who's a son of Awesome again, the family of Tiz now and others, and she's half to a stage runner herself, Joe. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting prospect here. From a pedigree standpoint, this appears to be an example of an absolute best case scenario. As you said, Coach Rocks comes from the first crop of Calumet Farms Preakness Stakes winner Oxbow, and she's the first stakes winner of any kind from 39 starters by the sire. Uh, Oxbow's only other black type earner so far is Foxtrot Sally, who's run third in a couple of sprint stakes at Churchill Downs and Gulfstream Park. But if you're looking for some positives here, Oxbow's foals have posted an average winning distance of 7.9 furlongs. That's nearly a mile, which is extremely high for a sire at this point in their first crop of runners. So you like to see things like that. Oxbow himself had no problem getting the distance, of course, winning the Preakness Stakes, running a second in the Belmont Stakes. So there are some positives to take forward going there. The female side of the family is pretty sparse once you get past the first dam. Coach Rocks is out of the grade three place stakes winner Mexican Moonlight, who won the Old South Handicap over a mile and 16th on the turf. She's also the dam of Oprado Olay, who has run second in two editions of the grade three Stars and Stripes, which goes a mile and a half on the turf. And he's won at that distance in non-stakes competition as well. And this is all great. It's a little, the family's a little turf heavy, but clearly there's got some bottom to them. They've got some distance capabilities. But after that, things quiet down a little bit. There's no graded black type under the second or third dams. And the fourth dam pretty much just has grade three winter night facts and a cloud of dust. However, if you keep digging, you do find some really strong German family in here. You have German champions Night Music and Novell and German group three winners Night Lagoon and Nelusco in there. So you got to look a real, real long ways back, but you can find some fun stuff in this female family. Yeah, and I do love seeing those, those German bloodlines in there. They're just tough, tough racehorses. They add a lot of bottom to a page. Remember Kentucky Derby winner and champion and Dubai World Cup winner Animal Kingdom, who was so versatile, came from German lines in his female family. Well, 
a massive weekend of prep action coming up, looking toward the Oaks as three races on Saturday, offering 100 Oaks qualifying points to the respective winners, 40 to the runners up. You pretty much punch your ticket by finishing in the top two. Those races include the Santa Anita Oaks, where we're expecting to see our number one contender, Midnight Basu, and the Ashland at Keeneland, where we'll see our number two, Monomoy Girl, meet our number four, Eskimo Kisses, and more. It's going to be a busy weekend. I really do think the picture is going to be even more clarified after this penultimate weekend of points races, and we'll be back to recap all of it for you same time next week.